it was quite serious in that not so much as far as a forest is concerned because it won't, it won't use as a commercial tree in forests as such but it was a very valuable wood strangely enough it was one of the main uses for, for, for elm was coffins and other, and other work where there was a lot of water because it, it could stand a lot of water uh, elms so and what was your response to the disease then? initially the response was to try and fell everything as it became infected and, and burned the lop on top and that sort of stuff but of course it, it didn't work at all in that way because elm disease was spread by a little beetle it's, it's, it's a fungal disease which blocks up the, the, the all the pores in the, in the tree and uh, it, they eventually the bits die off the beetles are attracted to dying elms so it's it's self-replicating thing as a tree as they attack some trees and they start to die off, then the beetles' population increased all the time, and they could spread on the wind, and they just went through the whole of Britain eventually. Mm. And uh, initially, there was some a little bit of a problem about what to do because there was trees were still controlled by the felling regulations, and I had to go and investigate uh, a lot of elms that were felled. Actually, not far from Binsterworth, on a farm there. Uh, with the possibility of prosecuting the people who'd felled the trees without a license, but it was decided at the end of the day that you couldn't really do that because the trees were actually infected with dish elm disease. So there was a great quantity of elm available at the time, which of course was useful, very good quality furniture as well, which is no longer there. And I know one tree in the forest which is still there, an elm tree, near, near Yorkley. One tree? It's one tree and a few bits that it's isolated, so I suspect, and I suspect now that the the beetle has disappeared. It's it's eaten its way out of its egg, out of its home.